Well, there was no question our guys were really ready to play and execute our game plan to perfection. Uh, one of the advantages we had was we had a week to prepare for this game and uh, we got a lot of rest. So we had a ton of energy and right from the opening tip, uh, we demonstrated that energy and effort at both ends of the court. We were very aggressive uh, trying to keep the ball away from, from uh, Amanda, uh, Armando Baycott. He was uh, tremendous in the last two games, and we, we had to somehow slow him down. All right, if you have questions for Coach L, please use the hand raise function and wait to be called on. We'll start with Cal Friedman from Canesport. Cal. Coach, oh, congratulations on the win. Two questions. Firstly, on Armando Baycott, what was the game plan in delimiting his possession? And then secondly, um, on the three-pointers tonight, 13 as a team, how have you been so prolific from beyond the arc this season? Well, uh, let's talk about the, the defense on Armando first. What we, what we basically told the players is that no one guy can guard him and that we were going to have to rotate guys from the backside of the floor, help Sam. He was going to have to try to front him, which isn't easy. And then, you know, switch on to Armando like Jordan Miller and Anthony Walker did throughout the game and just try to limit his number of touches. And because of the pressure on the perimeter, our guards were doing such a great job on their guards and those guys were missing threes. Armando was was uh, not able to really get in a, a good rhythm early in the game. What was the second question? Uh, just the three pointers compared to last oh. season. Well, you got to understand that now the guys are really sharing the ball well. We're a good three point shooting team, and and when you get good looks repeatedly, which we did. Um, it, it makes a big difference when you're shooting in rhythm. Uh, and I think a lot of credit goes to Charlie Moore and Sam, Sam uh, Wardenberg. And then, you know, the recipient of so many of those passes is Isaiah Wong and Cam Augusti, who are our leading scorers and really, really good at scoring the ball. I'm Michelle Coffin from the Miami Herald now. Hey, Jim, congratulations. Um, I had two questions also. One is, uh, did you ever imagine a blowout when you were planning and preparing for this game? Did you ever imagine that, that the game would, would be so lopsided? And then uh, my other question is about Sam. If you could just talk about Sam's first half. I mean, he was just, he, he hit all his shots and he just, just, you know, went to the rim so aggressively on those dunks and everything. If you could talk about Sam and also... Just did you ever imagine a blowout against North Carolina? You no, know, I when we're planning, we, we plan for the, the game to be decided in the last minute of play. What what offense we're going to run, what defense we're going to play, uh, how we're going to guard, uh, who, who should be in there to rebound. Because most games in the ACC uh, do come down to the last minute, sometimes the last possession. And uh, we try to prepare our guys for that. Uh, of course, we love that we were able to get out in front and stay out in front the whole game. Uh, Sam Wardenberg with rest is so good. And he plays so hard. He cramped up with 10 minutes to go. He didn't play in the last. Well, he played. He said he was good, but he wasn't. I put him in. He immediately came out because he started to cramp up again. When you give Sam Wardenberg a chance to rest and he was uh, shooting the ball well in practice, uh, he can be a major factor for us bo at both ends of the court because he's the one responsible for guarding Baycott mm -hmm. to begin with. And then uh, because our guards are so good at getting to the rim, oftentimes Sam is hanging on the perimeter. When he goes four for four from three to, in the first half, obviously that gives him and his teammates a lot of confidence. We're going out to Matt Norlander from CBS Sports. Matt. Hey, Jim, I uh, just wondered if you could speak big picture, you know, on the heels of this kind of victory um, for your program to be sitting here now, 14 and four, obviously still work to do. But after the past three years or so, right, where you guys were kind of stuck in the mire, the aftermath of the FBI stuff, you eventually got cleared. But as you well know, it just took time to regain your momentum. Can you speak to how satisfying and perhaps uh, uh, affirming it is to have your team perform at this level to this point in the season after enduring 
in some obscurity, everything you went through in the past three years. Uh, hey, Matt, when's the last time I saw you? Uh, well, I think we briefly crossed paths uh, on the trail over the summer uh, when you were oh, we with Caputo, but it's been, it's been a while and good to see you again, Jim. Okay, good seeing you, Matt. And I appreciate you asking the question. Uh, here's my approach to everything. I have got a very simple philosophy. It's based on three words, attitude, commitment, and class. My attitude has always been positive. Life is 10% is, is what happens to you and 80% how you react to it. And I shared that with my staff and with my, my players. Look at, you know, everybody goes through adversity in life. How we handle it will determine whether we're able, ever able to overcome it. And we're heading in the right direction, both this year and with our recruiting moving forward. The second part of the philosophy is commitment, where you have to be committed physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And the beautiful thing about this team is they really are. Right? They're very committed and to each other. They trust each other, like playing with each other. And I, I give a lot of credit to Charlie Moore and to, to Jordan Miller, because those guys, they didn't, they, they were at other schools. They, they got recruited highly. They could have gone someplace else. It's not that freshmen couldn't, but you know, these are older, experienced guys. You know, sometimes those guys come in and they want to show you what they can do. Instead, Charlie and, and uh, Jordan have just embraced our philosophy. And then the third part of the philosophy is, is about class. We tell our players, you got to be role models. You got to behave in a first class manner. Everything you do on and off the court is a reflection of me and my staff, the athletic department, the university. So we got guys who are working on their master's degree, are terrific students. They work hard at everything they do. And I'm just so proud of them. But as you said, we got a lot of work ahead of us. Um, what are we, six and one right now? Yes. Yeah, six and one in the league. We got 13 more conference games and every one of them is, is a challenge. We got time for two more from Coach Ella. We'll go to Luke Cheney and David Lang. Luke, go ahead. Hey coach, congrats on the win. Can you talk a little bit about the impact of the student section in tonight's victory? Oh, uh, you know, that, that makes a huge difference to our players and to the coaches to have the support for the program from the community, from the student body. And I hope they'll be there again on Saturday when we play Florida State. It's our arch rival. <coughs> Excuse me. So I give a lot of credit to the, to the student body. They were terrific. And I don't know if you saw it, but our, our, our players went in the stands to thank them for that. We'll go to David Lang, WPLG now. Hey, Coach, uh, two questions for you. First of all, what is it about you that makes that has had so much success against the Blue Bloods in the ACC, both Duke and North Carolina? And then my second question is, do you think it's time for this team to be in the top 25? <coughs> Okay, uh, the first thing is all, all of my success, wherever I've been, has been based on a tremendous team effort by my staff. Uh, Chris Caputo does a fantastic job. Bill Courtney, um, D DJ, Irving, my new assistant. These guys do a tremendous job of preparing our players. And then it, it, winning is about your players executing. You know, they, these guys, you know, I didn't even call a timeout tonight. Everything we, I, I think I called a timeout just to get the subs in at the end. But, you know, when you have players who work so hard and have learned what's expected of them. So uh, our, our guys have fought through a lot of adversity, as everybody knows. Uh, but they're, they're becoming better for it. That they're, they've learned that they can overcome all these challenges. I got one last one from Michael Euro, 305 Sports. Michael. Hey, Jim, heading into FSU on Saturday, uh, how prepared is your team? And, you know, how have you seen the locker room, you know, invest into that rivalry game? Well, we played uh, FSU uh, in Tallahassee just last week, and it was a tremendous college game. And uh, we had a one point lead with seven seconds to go. And, and unfortunately they made two free throws to win it. But that's very typical of an ACC game and very typical of a rivalry like ours with Florida State. 
uh, they've kind of had our number for the last several years when we've been shorthanded. But hopefully we'll learn from that first game and do a better job against them this time. 